Yo. Welcome to another Synfig tutorial. Um, well, this is not a tutorial, but uh, Synfig 1.4 is out, and I'm just going to show you guys what is new inside Synfig 1.4. Um, I'm going to go over some of the features that are I'm most interested in. Okay, I'm not going to go over every single feature, but uh, here we have the release notes and there are a ton of changes that has been made for Synfig 1.4. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave this link in the description so that you guys can come here and, you know, look, have a look at all the different changes that they have made in the update. Alright, so let's get started now. Um, with th those features that I'm interested in. So first, uh, first up we have, you can now edit curves on the graph. So um, if you have an animation, and I'm just gonna be doing an overview of all of these features. I may do um, a more extended tutorial on each of them later on. Um, so yeah, so if you, let's say you have an animation, right? So I have this, um, this circle moving along my timeline right if you click here on the timeline link um, or the timeline um, panel you'll be able to see the, the the curves that make up the animation um, you might not be able to see a curve right now because um, you know I didn't do a movement that gives you a curve but if I move it up you'll see it has a curve and you can actually edit these curves so let me actually zoom in on my art well zoom out by going to view and zoom out on timeline view zoom out okay it doesn't seem to work but you can also use control and hold on control and move your middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out okay all right so uh here are my keyframes and you can select all of these at once and move them on the timeline um, now the red line I believe represents the X axis and the, the green line represents the Y. So if you move this right you're moving the um, your alternate animation on the X axis. So notice it's moving on the X axis as I move this down. Right so what's happening is that the movement is going slower. Right so as it comes here it's getting slower and then comes back here right um, so so yeah this line allows you to alter what happens on the the x-axis and this one allows you to alter the y-axis right so you can have more I mean the whole point of this is to have more control over your animation right um, so that's that you can actually you can also right-click and change the keyframe type um, just like you would inside here um, what else can you, do? you can, well you can delete keyframes by clicking on them and just pressing delete um, I believe that you can do that over here as well now well that leads everything uh, let me undo that but yeah okay so enough of that I'll get deeper into that um, in another video all right so let's move on so next we have Okay, so now we can have, um, we can see the waveform for sounds. Um, the, the changes in the, in the, the sound feature, um, there's, it's still lacking a bit, but now you can see the waveform so you can do your lip syncing if you choose to, right? And uh, to do that, let me just go and add a sound. So right click in the layers panel, yeah. new layer, go to other and sound and then I'm going to, just going to search for my sound load right so your sound has been loaded but note notice that you can't see anything here right and you, you want to see the waveform so that you know if you're doing your lip syncing you can do it so click on the sound icon here in the properties and then where it says none here click on that and then you want to go to downloads well not downloads go to wherever your your audio is uh, and then open it up and you'll be able to see the waveform right so these two work together this just allows you to see the waveform but you can't hear anything if you play it by itself right so you have to import them 
the two different ways you have to go to you have to right click new layer other um, and import the sound here as well as you have to import the sound here so that you can see the waveform and hear um, what is playing uh, there's no feature yet for you to scrub and hear so you'll have to play in no, order to hear the so audio this is schematic okay um, so yeah so there's that and then you can do your lip syncing within here all right so on to the next feature uh, yeah so the, there are time there are timeline playback features now um, so if I guess let me just create another animation if I have an animation going on let me just move this yeah so if we have an animation going on uh, you can choose where you want to play the animation and where to stop it like you know you can preview a portion of the animation using these buttons here so let's say I go here and I press this button right here notice what happens you see these diagonal lines so that means that the animation is only going to play for the portion that is selected I believe it's going to start here so let me play yeah so it starts here and then maybe I want it to only play within this area here. I would go here and then I think I would click this same button here. Oh no, that extends it. Let me actually decrease that. Then go back here and then let me see if I can find that button. Do -do 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 -do. I believe it's one of these. I mean the feature is still new I haven't explored it yet okay so it's this one here <laughs> right next to it all right so you can um, block off those areas there and just only have the animation play between this point these two points here if I play notice it plays just that area and then it stops okay so there's that um, yeah oh you can also now there's also a feature to change the length of the timeline without usually when you, you want to change the length you would have to go all the way up here um to like canvas properties and then time and then change the where the animation ends you can now do it here so let's say i want this to stop at 48 frames you just go here and type 48 uh, let me 48 and enter and the timeline changes to 48 frames Right, so this makes it easier for you um, to alter the how long the animation will be. So that's really, really awesome, right there. Um, okay, so onto the next feature. Uh, so you can. There's also a feature now to edit an image in an external program, such as uh, Krita or maybe like GIMP or Photoshop. Um, so if you have an image imported into Synfig, for example, um, you can export that image into a, um, an external program, edit it, and then um, make changes as you see fit. So here, let's say here we have an image, right? If you right click on the image and go all the way down, you would, um, until you see edit image in external tool, and you click on that, then the, the, um, the software would open up and then you'd be able to edit the image in that software and to to um, change the software that you want to work with Synfig you would go to edit preferences um, editing and then where it says edit in external you would actually locate the software that you want it to open in right here here I have it set to Krita right um, so it should open in Krita but when I checked this it doesn't really work maybe I'm doing something wrong um, I haven't explored that feature fully as yet, but it's there. You can try it out and see if it works for you. Um, okay, so, uh, oh, onion skin is now improved. I've never used to use the onion skin feature in, inside Synfig because, you know, it was a bit buggy, um, but now it has improved. So let's check it out, right? Um, so let's say I have my, my animation <laughs> and I'm always going to use a circle for simple animations. Um, so let's say I tur turn on onion skin here by clicking this onion icon We now see the onion skin, right? Um, this number here Changes the amount of frames that you see before the the um, the image here 
and this one changes to changes what we see after so let's say I'm here and I increase this we would see what happens from here to how, how many frames that I I actually add here all right so as you can see it increases the amount so it's it's showing you the balls trajectory from where it is um, to where it's going right uh, and you can decrease that of course and you can increase the previous one here Yo, Kimari. right and it would show you every single frame um, as you continue to increase the amount so there's that all right so let's move on shall we uh, no oh so now there's a rounded rectangle option so if you go to your rectangle tool and you create your rectangle I believe the option is only only works with the first layer type right so make sure that is selected so if I click on my rectangle layer and I scroll down let me actually just move this up we see here it says bevel there's a new option called bevels and if I let's increase this by maybe let's say 40 the the edges are now rounded right so it makes it easier for you to create rounded edges using rectangles or squares if you ever wanted to do that right and of course this is animatable so you can animate the edges the changes from a sharp curve to a rounded curve right so there's that option um okay let's move on so you can now change the default background um most of my videos when i start you see i have a white background already versus the empty um space here and let me show you how you can do that so if you go to edit preferences and you go to interface i believe or is it document okay so if you go to document you can have a default background color when you open up um, synfig right you can set it here or you can have it open up with an image so here i have an image already loaded so let's check that out so if i click on the image option and press ok let me open up a new document we can see that it opens up with an image so each time i open up synfig it would open up with this image but I don't want that, so I'm just gonna go back to a solid color, right? And then if I create a new document, we get that back, okay? So that's pretty cool. And um, all right, so next up on the list, we have, oh, you can now press delete to uh, delete layers. Um, in previous versions, you couldn't, there wasn't that option to do so. But you can now click on the on the layer that you want to delete and just press the delete key and it's now it, it, it will be deleted right usually you'd have to come all the way down here and click the x right um but i think this was working in 1.3 now 1.4 as that feature fully installed um okay there's also the option to use the home and and end keys on your keyboard to switch from the beginning of your animation to the end of the animation so let's go again and just add a simple animation so i can show you the way that works so i have an animation circle moving from there to there right so if you are here um the beginning would be the home and the the end would be the um the well the end so if you press the end key on your keyboard Right, it would jump. The animation would jump all the way down to the end frame. Notice my uh, my my line right here. And if I press the home key, it will bring it back to the beginning of the animation. So that's a new shortcut feature that would help. That will I'm sure will help you save a lot of time when you, if you want to you know do something like this. Right. And um, as I said before, all the changes are here. Oh, they are increased. I forgot to mention there is one more feature that I really really like. So usually um this button <laughs> it wasn't very helpful but if you are doing animation and you press this button it creates magic <laughs> and let me show you what i mean um if you play this back right the animation depending on what you're doing the animation would not play back in real time and it would be very 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 choppy right but if you press this button right here look what happens it basically pre-renders those frames 
so the animation moves very very smoothly and it seems to move in real time so if you play you get a smooth output within the viewport right here and that's one feature that i really 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 love right so um you don't necessarily have to go to your to preview your animations anymore to to see how it would look in the final render right um yeah and uh, as i said i'm going to post this link so you can check out all the other features uh, but those are just the features that i really really was interested in so yeah so that's it for this video it was a bit long but it was necessary and i uh, hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one Yo.